Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast. Today is Thursday, July 15, 2021. Today I'm going to recap game number four of the NBA Finals. Major League Baseball returns today. We'll head to that game. We will go over the tee times for the latest golf tournament, which is the... uh. Um, Barbasol Championship. I'm going to predict every team in the NHL's head coaches three years from now. I'll go over the latest news and notes, and I'll do my best bet of the day. All right, we'll start with the NBA Finals. Game number four, and the Bucks came out winners, 109-103 to even up the series at two apiece. Best bet was a loser. Chris Middleton had 40 points in this game for Milwaukee. And Giannis had 26, 14, and 8. And on the other side, Devin Booker had 42, but had five fouls. Chris Paul had an awful game, 10 points, 7 assists, but like 15 turnovers, which is... Insane. And then, if you ask me now who's the favorite for finals MVP to me, it's Giannis. He might win it in a losing effort. Like, that would not shock me. LeBron should have a couple years ago, but um, they stupidly gave it to Andre Iguodala, which made zero sense. Just because he had a couple big shots in that series means that's why he got it. But it should have been LeBron. He was the best player in the series, but they lost. And Drew Holiday was awful. 13-7-7, but they got away with that. So somebody was getting away with a bad offensive point guard game, whether it was Giannis and the Bucks with Drew Holiday or the Suns with Chris Paul. And game number six, or I'm sorry, five, will be Saturday night. Game six will be Tuesday, and I will preview and pick both those games on this very podcast. All right, Major League Baseball returns tonight, one game. And it's between the Red Sox and the Yankees as uh, Boston like would like to continue its magical run in the AL East. They're currently a game and a half up on the Rays. The Yankees are eight back of Boston, tied with the Blue Jays in the standings. Plus one run differential. They've... Been, I think, the most disappointing team in the American League this year, arguably in all of baseball, them and the Braves. But the Braves have had a ton of injuries they can't overcome, although the Acuna thing really has given that team an excuse. Um, I'm sure there's lines up for this game, and I'm sure Garrett Cole will be on the mound tonight for the Yankees, as he should be. It's a, an important game against a rival. And... The Yanks are minus 130. Red Sox plus 110 over on their 9.5. Minus 110 each way. Boston plus 1.5 is minus 164. Yankees minus 1.5 is plus 136. It says TBD for a starter and undecided. It should be Garrett Cole. If it's Garrett Cole, that line's going up. Rodriguez this season has not been good. I'm going to go over 9.5. In case it's not Cole, but there's a world where it is Cole and either he gets rocked or he dominates and the Yankees score nine runs and Boston only scores two. There's that world. The Yankees have not beaten Boston yet this year. The Yanks are favored because they're home. But I'm going to go over nine and a half because Rodriguez has not been good this year as my pick for the game. All right. We'll move on to golf now as we will look at the tee times because the tournament has not started yet. Um, Notables. um, In the 745 window, KJ Choi's in that window. 756, Sam Ryder. 807, Will Gordon. Camilo Vegas, Bo Van Pelt, Brock Stewart. 
818, Tyler Duncan, JT Potson, Satoshi Kodiara, 829, Bryce Garnett, Russell Knox, 840, JJ Spawn, Charles Schwartzel, Dylan McCarthy, Chesson Headley, 851, Cam Percy, 902, John Bone, 913, Davis Thompson, 924, Kevin Ventura, and Rob Oppenheim. In the 935 window, um, nobody of note. 1245, Mark Hubbard. 1256, DJ Tran, Luke List, Tom Lewis. No one in the 107 window, of, really of note, N either with the uh, 118. 129, Richie Wierenski, Adam Shank, Joaquin Herman. 140, Bo Hogg, Seamus Power, Ben Martin. 151, Herrick Norlander, Robbie Shelton, Patrick Rogers. 202, Scott Stallings, Vince Whaley. 9 really in the 213 window. Or 224. Or even 235. For that matter. Alright. Next segment I'm going to do is predict who every NHL team's head coaches will be three years from now. I did this for the NFL like a little over three weeks ago. I did Major League Baseball on Tuesday. I did NBA yesterday, and then at some point next week, maybe Tuesday, I'll do um, college football, Power 5, AAC, and Mountain West. And Thursday, I'll do college basketball, um, the Super 6, AAC, and Mountain West is, I think, how I am going to do this. All right. The Anaheim Ducks, Peter Laviolette. Um, Laviolette right now is currently the head coach in Washington. I think eventually they move on, and maybe three years from now, Anaheim's on the come. Maybe Jack Eichel's on that team, and they want a te a coach that has uh, um, been to Cup Finals is in the past, and Laviolette has. Arizona Coyotes, Phil Housley. Housley was the head coach of the Buffalo Sabres not long ago. I don't think their current head coach will last. Maybe they'll be in a rebuild by then. Boston, Kevin Dean. I think that uh, Bruce Cassidy moves on eventually, and maybe Kevin Dean's the coach at Boston. The Buffalo Sabres, Seth Appert. He's currently the head coach at their AHL affiliate Rochester, and that team tends to change coaches every two years. The Calgary Flames, Rick Tockett. I don't think Daryl Sutter is going to last there, and I think they want more of an offensive mind. I think Rick Tockett would be a good fit. Carolina Hurricanes, Rod Brindamore. I think he sticks around in Carolina. Maybe they'll have a cup within the next three years. The Chicago Blackhawks, Mark Crawford, assistant. So I don't think um, their current coach... Will last, Jeremy Clopton, and Crawford's one of his assistants, so I could see a promotion there. Colorado Avalanche, Jared Bendar. I think he sticks around. Maybe they have a cup within the next three years. Columbus Blue Jackets, Brad Shaw. He was an assistant under John Tortorella, and now he's on Travis Green's staff in Vancouver. Maybe um, that's where he lands as he should get an opportunity. The Dallas Stars. Todd Nelson. He's currently an assistant with the Stars. He was a 
head coach for their minor league affiliate. I believe it's in Austin, but they're the Texas Stars. The trait, Jeff Halpern, he's an assistant on John Cooper's staff in Tampa. I think the Jeff Blashill era will come to an end sooner rather than later. The Edmonton Oilers, Jay Woodcroft. He is the head coach with their minor league affiliate, Bakersfield. I don't think their current coach will last. So I could see them uh, promoting Woodcroft from the minors. The Florida Panthers. Ulf Samuelson. He's an assistant on their Joe Quinville right now. Samuelson deserves an opportunity. So why not? Las Vegas Golden Knights. They well they're the Vegas Golden Knights, so uh I'll just do them now. I think Pete DeBoer is still there. Maybe they have a cup within the next couple of seasons. So I think he, uh, Peter DeBoer sticks around with Vegas. Los Angeles Kings. Claude Julian. Um, I don't think Todd McClellan's going to last there. And I could see them going with a Daryl Sider type of guy. As they're trying, maybe three years from now, they're in win-now mode. So I can see Julian being the Kings coach. Minnesota Wild, Dean Evison. He's currently their head coach. I think he sticks around. Should have won the Jack Adams, but he was robbed by Rod Brindamore. Who did a great job with the Hurricanes, don't get me wrong, but Dean Evison deserved it for getting the Wild to uh, where they were. Montreal Canadiens, Elaine Vigneault. I think he gets fired from Philly. And I don't know if Descharmy will last within the next three years. So I could see Vigneault going back home to Montreal. Nashville Predators, Todd Richards. Um, he's an assistant on John Hines' staff in Nashville. I could see him getting a shot. New Jersey Devils, Elaine Nasserdine. He's an assistant under Lindy Ruff, but I don't think Lindy Ruff's a good coach. I'm sorry. For comedy purposes, this one's funny. New York Islanders, John Gruden. Um, he's currently an assistant under Barry Trotz, I think. Um, there's a chance this franchise takes a step back with other teams in the division emerging like the Rangers and Carolina back in the division. And maybe they're like a one and done in the playoffs. And I could see them moving on. The New York Rangers, Gerard Glenn. I think he's still there three years from now. Um, maybe they're a contender. Ottawa Senators, Jack Capuano. He's an assistant under DJ Smith right now. Capuano's been a head coach in the past with the Islanders. Philadelphia Flyers, Ian Laprier. He's the head coach at their AHL affiliate, Lehigh Valley. I could see a world where Vigneault goes and maybe midseason and then they promote Laprier. Pittsburgh Penguins, Mike Vellucci. He's currently an assistant under Mike Sullivan in Pittsburgh. Um, I could see uh, Vellucci getting a shot. And I almost picked the other assistant that was the former head coach of the Washington Capitals. But I did not go there. Um, I'm just blanking on Dex Caps coach's name. That's currently on the Penguin staff under Sullivan. Um, Todd Reardon. I almost went there, but um, I don't think he was that good of a coach in Washington. St. Louis Blues. Jim Montgomery. He's an assistant on their Craig Berube right now. And Montgomery coached the Dallas Stars a couple years ago. San Jose Star, uh, Sharks, Todd McClellan. Um, I'm going to say that San Jose's coach doesn't last, and they hired McClellan away from, not away from Los Angeles, but I think he is relieved of his duties there, and he uh, lands on his feet in San Jose. 
Seattle Kraken, Dave Haxtell, I think he'll still be there three years from now. I don't know where that team will be. I think probably still rebuilding. Tampa Bay Lightning, John Cooper, I think he's still there. That's what two cups gets for you. Toronto Maple Leafs, Greg Moore, he's currently the head coach of the, their AHL affiliate, the Toronto Marlies. And I think that there's a chance he gets a shot. The Vancouver Canucks, Jason King, he's currently an assistant under Travis Green. And I don't think Travis Green lasts. We did Vegas already because I put it as Las Vegas by mistake. The Washington Capitals, Spencer Carberry, he's the, the head coach right now at their AHL affiliate, the Hershey Bears. Maybe they underachieve and Laviolette gets axed, and I could see Carberry getting a chance here. And the Winnipeg Jets, Barry Trotz. I'm going to say that they fire Paul Maurice within the next couple of years, and they go with the more defensive-minded head coach in Barry Trotz. All right, that was a fun exercise. I'll see how I do with this. This obviously was a tough one to do, not as easy as the NFL or the NBA. All right, now I'm going to do news and notes. Um, This is going to be a longer news and notes than it normally is because I did not do news and notes yesterday due to um, the... Um, uh, big activity I had yesterday predict, uh, predicting who is going to get protected by Seattle. Um, so Willie Green is now the Pelicans head coach. Um, the two sides are expected to finalize a deal that will make him the team's coach. Um, the Canadian Shea Weber could miss next season and NHL future is in doubt due to multiple injuries. So that's something to keep an eye on. Trevor Bauer's administrative leave has been extended by nearly two weeks to July 27th. So that is, um, something to keep an eye on as maybe he gets a long ter- longer term suspension. So this Richard Sherman story um, I really haven't talked about much. Um, he has been connected to a hit and run incident, and he remains in police custody, being investigated for bulgary domestic violence, but not yet formally charged. So obviously, we got to keep an eye on that one. Um. Horse trainer Bob Baffert's New York suspension for Medina Spirits failed posturase drug test has been nullified. So that's some interesting horse-related news. Um, We'd like to get Jeff Burns on for the Haskell, which is coming up soon. The Bucks fans are chanting Bucks and Six. Devin Booker said it a postseason record for most career points in or most points in a first postseason game at 522 and counting. So Giannis and Dedekumbo had this wild block last night. And it had NBA Twitter going nuts. Saquon Barkley to get paid in crypto as he plans to have all his endorsement money converted to Bitcoin moving forward. The 76ers are shopping Ben Simmons as Philly has opened up trade conversations for the star point guard and would like an all-star caliber player in return. So we'll see who that is, whether... Could be like Damian Lillard or somebody like that. The WNBA All-Star Game was last night as 
Team WNBA beat Team USA by a score of 93-5. And Enrique Ugumbali was the All-Star Game MVP. Vanessa Bryant made an appearance at that game with her daughters wearing Kobe and Gigi jerseys, which was really, really cool. FIBA denies Neka and Gumake's petition as she won't be allowed to play in Ni- uh, for Nigeria due to substantial involvement with Team USA. So that is very, very strange and wrong, in my opinion. You should be able to play for your country and... Nigeria is her country. I know she's involved with Team USA, but she should be playing for Nigeria. So I um I disagree with that move. Um Lionel Messi to stay with Barcelona, five year deal that would pay him half his previous salary. So he gets pretty much um a discount to stay. Bradley Beal enters health protocols as his return to play is uncertain for the Olympics. Team USA finally gets a win in exhibition play, 108-80 under or over Argentina. And Jason Tatum was out again. The Buccaneers and Chris Godwin didn't reach a long-term deal, hoping for next offseason. So Xavier and Howard on the trade market, teams are eyeing him for a trade. The New York Jets low-balled Marcus May as the star safety is expected to play season on franchise tag after the Jets offered him a deal 20% below the tag amount, which is stupid. The Pelicans might let Lonzo leave in free agency as the team is unlikely to match a significant offer sheet for Lonzo with the Bulls and Clippers both interested, so keep an eye on that. The John Collins market is heating up. Mavericks, Heat, Spurs, Timberwolves are expected to pursue Collins in free agency. The Jaguars and Urban Meyer have been Sopinade for documents on the hiring and resignation of former Iowa coach Chris Doyle. So, that's interesting. There is a video going on about Travis Kelsey's last name. And how it's not really Kelsey. Is it Kelchi? I don't even know what it is. I have to look at it. Isaac Bruce called out Carson Martyr and says that he and Torrey Holt are the NFL's best wide receiver duo ever over the Vikings pair because they won a Super Bowl. Patrick Mahomes says he wasn't shading Justin Herbert as he said that uh, the comment was taken out of context. I have a ton of respect for him. Nikita Kucherov was playing in the Stanley Cup Final with the non-displaced rib fracture, which is wild. And Victor Hedman played with the torn meniscus. A Reggie Bush doc is coming, and there's an upcoming film to focus on his career and scandal that cost him the Heisman as he says, I'm finally ready to tell my story. The Yankees and Padres are hiring Joey Gallo for a trade. Zach Hyman is likely to hit the free agent market as there's a sizable gap between the Leafs and the pending free agent in contract talks. The Minnesota Wild bought out Zach Parisi and Ryan Suter as they've been put on waivers as the Wild will pay each $6.7 million over the next eight years. So they really um, stretch their contracts and 
The breakups did not go well, according to The Athletic. Ryan Suter hung up on the GM, and Parise never felt lower in his career, which is wild. We'll see where those two players land. Jeff Skinner waived his no-move clause as Buffalo can leave him unprotected for the expansion draft, but Seattle is unlikely to select him in his $9 million uh, con- uh, nine million per year. Gabriel Landeskog upset with the Avalanche as his deal wasn't done 8-10 months ago and the side's still far away from an agreement. So there's, in my opinion, a shot he's on another team next year. So Dominique Descharmy is now the permanent head coach of the Canadians, so that's deserving. Kawhi Leonard had ACL surgery to repair a partially torn right ACL. The Los Angeles Angels drafted all pitchers as the team used all 20 of their picks in the draft on pitchers. That was like when Carolina went all defensive players in the 2020 NFL draft. It looks like Major League Baseball is changing the doubleheader rule as Commissioner Rob Manford doesn't think the seven-inning doubleheaders are going to be a part of the future going forward. So that is good news. I, I didn't like that, and I think the runner on second base in extra innings should go away as well. It's cost teams some games. Ex-Ohio State players plead to NCAA. Terrell Pryor and other former Buckeyes from 2010 Sugar Bowl team ask the NCAA to restore records after the NIL approval. And the New York Knicks are eyeing Colin Sexton is the team is the most aggressive among the trade suitors for the Cavs guard. I think Sexton would be a nice fit on New York if that was the direction they went. Um, I think that there's a chance he's a good team or bad team, good stats, bad team player. But I think that he's somebody that Tom Thibodeau can change just like he changed Julius Randle. So. Keep an eye on that. All right. Best bet of the day. Brought to you by FanDuel. I have no choice but 9.5 and Yankees Red Sox is the only move. Because that's the only game on tonight. So I'm going to lay a half unit on over 9.5 between the Red Sox and the Yankees. Do I feel good about it? No, but it's the only way that I can go tonight for best bet all right so that's it for the show we'll be back tomorrow recapping that yankees red sox game and looking ahead to tomorrow and the rest of the weekend's baseball games we'll go over the current leaderboard in the golf tournament we will preview and predict the nascar races we will preview and predict game five of the nba finals coming up on saturday night news and notes nhl mock draft probably and my best bet of the day hope you guys have a great day everyone